Hi, I'm Gary Edelman from the American Battlefield Trust. Here we are at Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. It was Harper, Harpers Ferry, Virginia during the Civil War. And I hope you can come here. But if you can't or if you can't do everything we're going to do, I hope you enjoy this sort of virtual tour. I won't be on camera all that much. I'll be pointing it toward what we're seeing. Uh, thank me later. We are on Shenandoah Street here at Harpers Ferry. It was originally known in the 1730s as The Hole. They needed a better name than that. And then about 14 years later, a guy named Robert Harper uh, showed up and he's going to establish a ferry here. Therefore, the name Harpers Ferry. Uh, uh, that went on for a long while. Uh, George Washington would visit here in the 1780s. And not long after that, the United States uh, government would establish an armory and an arsenal here. Um, uh, on 118 acres originally here, and there is going to be construction starting, and by the early 1800s, you have a full-on arsenal and armory. You can see, as we walk down Shenandoah Street right here, you can see, although we're now in West Virginia, right across the Potomac River is Maryland Heights over there. That figured prominently in the Civil War, and that is the target of our walk today. Uh, sorry you're not with me today. And if you go over to the right across uh, the Shenandoah River, that's right, the Shenandoah River and the Potomac River come to a confluence right beyond these trees here. That is Virginia, that's Loudon Heights. So Loudon Heights over there, the confluence right beyond the trees there, and of course, uh, Maryland Heights over there. So you've got three states visible right here, and you can also see how Harpers Ferry itself would be indefensible. Um, if you're trying to hold this town and the enemy, in this case the Confederates in 1862, have those heights and these heights, how are you possibly going to defend this town? Looking back in the other direction, you can see some of the other uh, structures that were associated with the original armory. Uh, I believe the quartermaster is over there, as well as the machine shop. Uh, this is uh, what you're seeing, I believe, one of the arsenals that were here, and the most famous building of all here at Harbors Ferry and that is John Brown's Fort. Uh, what's interesting about John Brown's Fort um, is that it didn't originally sit there. In fact, it sat up there. We'll break for a second. I'll get back to that. Excuse the ambient noise here as we look. Now I am where on the site of John Brown's Fort and you might be able to see in the distance right about there some stone steps as somebody's walking down there. These go way back and in fact you can see uh, uh, here a historic picture from right at the end of the Civil War showing those same steps and some of the same structures that you can see up there now. Let me back up a little bit though so we can show you the actual site here of John Brown's Fort. A lot of people are con confused about this. Why did they put it back over there? Well that's because this whole embankment on which I stand right now was constructed to assist with the railroad but you can clearly see in the original pictures let me show you one right here where you can see the fort do you see those two chimneys over there oh there they are right over the obelisk that marks the original site of the fort uh, you can see in every picture that structure as well as some of the other structures now what many people don't know is that eventually the site was picked up uh, the the fort was picked up brick by brick and moved um, first to Chicago and then out to the Murphy farm which is about four miles in front of me right here then it was moved over to a place called Camp Hill that you're looking at right over there and on Camp Hill it was used as a part of Storer College a black university that was there for a long time and then only in around, I think, the early 1960s or, or late 1950s was it brought down to its current location. Um, um, some of the bricks are original, and uh, I believe the rooms are constructed in reverse, but otherwise it's pretty cool, and you can see it when you come up here. Um, again, we are looking toward Loudon Heights, and you're looking at some of the other areas. Now, Harpers Ferry consists of a bunch of little museums. That's the Whitehall Tavern. They interpret taverns there. One over there interprets Meriwether Lewis's stop here on the way, yes, to his expedition, where he's going to secure and create boats and get Get arms and other things like that. So let's walk over to the actual John Brown's Fort. I think you all know the story already. We're talking about October of 1859. John Brown Fort, some sons, some accomplices are of course going to try to lead a, uh, a slave insurrection or uprising here. Um, they're going to cross the bridge across the Potomac River over there, um, do a pretty good job of quietly securing the town, but word quickly spreads and Brown and his men will hole up um, in this structure here. Again, the structure was not on the same spot, but there's a great picture here to show it. This is what the armory looked like in 1859. You can see this one labeled as John Brown's Fort. So in other words, we're looking at the right spot, but that's the embankment there um, that makes it impossible to put the fort back in the same place. So in other words, it was right in front of us and there was a street off to the right of there. That's the street of the armory. You can imagine Brown's men going down the street here, capturing the one guard I think that was guarding this area. And it went pretty well at first as Brown used this as a headquarters and will fan out into the countryside to try to um, you know, get people, slaves and, and, and others to 
flock to his cause. I think you know that doesn't go well. They are going to end up holed up in this fort, uh, first by more local people, then actual troops arrive under, yes, you guessed it, Robert E. Lee. Um, Jeb Stewart is here as well. The Marines are gonna um, break down the door with a ladder after their uh, request for surrenders are refused. Uh, they go in, they kill and capture the accomplices. Uh, one guy bayoneted to the wall over there, and you're going to have John Brown uh, wounded and captured, and he will, of course, go to the gallows not long after that in Charlestown, um, uh, West Virginia, where he will be hanged. But before saying that saying, uh, before being hanged, becoming a martyr by saying, I, John Brown, am now quite certain that the guilty crimes of this land cannot be purged away, but with blood. Now, excuse the bumping as I try to walk you out toward one of the Civil War's more beautiful areas. Uh, the Harpers Ferry has long been considered a particularly lovely area. And here we are coming toward the confluence, famously, uh, Thomas Jefferson um, got on a rock about a half a mile behind me, now known as Jefferson's Rock, and said that the view where the rivers uh, met in confluence right here was worth a trip across the Atlantic Ocean just to see it. And it is beautiful um, as you look at it here. Um, I thought I saw a Civil War Trust or an American Battlefield Trust hat over there for a second there. Uh, again, Maryland Heights. Loudoun Heights. At the base of Loudoun is the Shenandoah River that you can see flowing in there. The Shenandoah is one of those few rivers that flows from um, south to north. So when you go down the Shenandoah Valley, you're actually going north. And here it is, the confluence where the Potomac over here on your left is going to meet it here. Um, that's Maryland Heights. That is um, our target for today. Uh, we're going to do that on the way. But let me go toward the most common question that any Harpers Ferry guide will get here. What does that say? The answer is Menon's Boreated Toilet Talcum Powder. It was made with some sort of a paint that is hard to get off and it has lasted um, the better part of a century. As we walk just a little bit further, no that we are on a famous trail right now. This is, of course, the Appalachian Trail that runs all the way from Georgia to Maine. So here you are. If you never get to hike the Appalachian, you're doing with me today as we go across uh, one of the more modern railroad bridges. There used to be other bridges crossing here. Uh, Harpers Ferry just endured a terrible situation from 1859 to 1865 as the town kept changing hands, kept on being the scene of strife, um, and the bridges were burned several times. Pontoon bridges were here and whatnot, and here you have a remnant uh, of the original piers or abutments from the bridge at the time. But we're going to cross the Potomac River here on our way to Maryland Heights, and we're not going to scale the heights directly. We have to walk down that way in order to do it. We'll walk along the CNO Canal. Um, where I'll pick up before long, but first, 10 more seconds of Zen. Just a quick addition here as we come to the steps that'll bring us back down to sort of ground level. If you're ever walking across this bridge and you have the pleasure to see a train come in on the track and go right into the tunnel through the mountain, pretty cool stuff. During the Civil War, the trains actually hugged the side of the mountain. Um, which is pretty neat. And that is the CNO Canal towpath. It's called a towpath because that is the canal itself, and the canal boats were actually towed uh, by mules or donkeys, and they were brought along um, through a series of locks all the way from here to Washington, D.C., and behind me, all the way numerous miles to Cumberland, Maryland. All right, still walking along here along the CNO Canal towpath. Um, again, you can see uh, the canal right over here. And again, I could take this all the way back um, to Washington, D.C. and straight ahead to Cumberland, Maryland, if, if I was so inclined. Over there is Camp Hill that I mentioned earlier. Of course, a lot of the armory uh, logistics and headquarters and uh, barracks and buildings were up in that direction. You might be able to catch what looked like a once prominent hotel called the Hilltop House. I'm told that there is a new development organization that is going to bring it back to its former glory and just take this view in. Uh, we are still not to the point where we can cross the road safely and head up uh, to Maryland Heights. Uh, this is a tough hike. Uh, I don't suggest anyone do it unless you are used to several mile hikes up a steep elevation. Well, I guess you saw it from the pictures, but I will say this, someone that you've heard of, and I'll reveal that as we get along, actually turned back halfway up, and this was a hardy person. Okay, leaving the Potomac River here. 
uh, and coming up into the woods, the rocky hill known as Maryland Heights up here. So we'll get started and uh, I'll only be filming portions of this. <laughs> um, again, you're welcome. Uh, and I'll show you some stuff along the way. Just know that this is the real deal. And uh, if you are a climber hiker, I hope you'll do it someday. This is one of the uh, most difficult of all Civil War climbs. Um, Sitlington's Hill at McDowell stands out to me. Picacho Peak at uh, uh, Picacho Pass, Arizona stands out as a real deal hike. Those western mountains have something over on the eastern mountains here. All right, I calculate that I'm about a quarter of the way up. I hope it's not less. In fact, I hope I'm a third of the way up already. I've been coming up here since 1996. In the last 23 years, you know what? I've noticed it doesn't get any easier um, to do this hike. So <laughs> I'll just keep on going and report along the way. Uh, the reason it's cool to come up here is not only for the view, but that this is a battlefield. There is a fight on top of Maryland Heights. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But every time I come up here, I think how hard it is even to get yourself up here, let alone to get up the cannons and the other uh, material of war in order to stage any sort of a fight here. Um, let alone carrying a heavy backpack. I think mine weighs about five pounds. I think there's weighed a little bit more. All right, I think I'm about halfway up now. I can see that we are about equal or on line in elevation with um, Camp Hill um, off in the distance there. You may or may not be able to catch some of the uh, headstones of the Harper Cemetery where the original Harpers are actually buried as well. But what you can see here is an old fortification. It's not much. It's known as the Naval Battery. But I like the way you can look at that and see this uh, sketch they have here on the uh, uh, the wayside exhibit. You can see I'm so tired I'm starting to lose the way I can, my manner of speak. Uh, but you can see these are not regular guns. These are heavy guns. They have the real deal ones. These aren't 800 pound parrot rifle tubes or you know 1200 pound Napoleon tubes. These are three and four thousand pound tubes uh, for these big guns that they were able to get up here. Again it's hard to get yourself up. Imagine trying to get all this stuff up as well. Um, and here we go as we continue. You can I hope see that this is not flat most of the way up, as mountains tend to be. <laughs> you all might recall that in early October of 1862, in the wake of the Battle of Antietam, Abraham Lincoln came to visit George McClellan at Antietam. Well, here's where he came into. Abraham Lincoln came to Harper's Ferry and expressed an interest in walking up Maryland Heights, see the Union position there that he'd heard so much about that helped to precipitate the, precipitate the largest mass capture of Union troops during the war at Harper's Ferry. Now let me preface this by saying Lincoln was a tough dude. He would go from town to town and challenge people when he was younger to wrestling matches. He could hold an axe out um, longer than other people could. But yet Lincoln, climbing Maryland Heights, was unable to continue. So if that hardy dude, even if in his 50s and president, couldn't continue, you were excused from not coming. A lot of people when they come up here for the first time think, okay, I'm descending toward the overlook. I must be at the top. That's the red trail. What they don't always realize is that there is a blue trail. That takes you up to the top where the Civil War fortifications, the stone fort, actually was. And many people, after descending toward the overlook that I'm taking, going to now, and then coming back up from that overlook, um, suddenly don't have the same ambition they did before to go up and see the stone fort. In fact, of my dozen times up here, I've only been up to the stone fort two or three times. I'll call this my fourth. And after about a quarter mile steep climb down from where you were, you eventually get treated to one of the best views of the Civil War. See if I can pick my way down here so you can enjoy the reveal that people get when they get to do this. If you overlook Harper's Ferry, West Virginia. Yeah. You've probably seen it in books. A little more impressive in person. All right, I'm really glad I came up here today, and I hope you all enjoy the view. There's Loudon Heights. 
There is uh, the confluence of the Shenandoah and the Potomac Rivers. Here is the bridge across which we sort of walked together. And there is Harper's Ferry. If we zoom in a little bit, you can see John Brown's Fort right there. You can see the building with the two chimneys I talked about earlier. That is Shenandoah Street. You could see the tavern and the Meriwether Lewis stuff I talked about. Maybe even the obelisk in front of it where John Brown's Fort was. You might be able to even pick out the stone steps as you go and you can look up the Shenandoah River as it winds its way toward, of course, the Shenandoah Valley at which we are at uh, the foot, I guess you would call it right here. Uh, you could see the hilltop house that I talked about earlier and you can look all the way up the Potomac River, of course. And then if I zoom out a little bit, you can see that uh, I've really descended from where I was before we're nowhere near the top so we still have quite a ways to go up here um, just a beautiful view up here and worth the climb if you can make it and if not um, you know uh, I hope you enjoy this video one thing I want to say among other things is um, that when you come up here um, you are have the echoes of soldiers everywhere men of the 22nd New York State Militia whose photos were taken all over Camp Hill I'll see if I can even break some out uh, during this film they talked about crossing the bridge or swimming across the Potomac River here and dipping into the Potomac in September uh, uh, in the summer of 1862. They were mustered out in September of 1862, right before the surrender. Some of the luckiest guys, of course, somebody on there, a guy named Goldschmidt, survived the Civil War only to make his money and get on a fancy ship called the Titanic and went down the Titanic later. So luck holds several forms. You can see the CNO Canal. We crossed that bridge over there and then we walked along the CNO Canal for a while um, until we were able to access the trail up here near those cars you might be able to see off in the distance and then walked by a circuitous route down here. Our next route will take us up to the top of uh, Maryland Heights as you see it up there and I'm just going to pan just a little bit while I see if I can find some of those photos I talked about about the 22nd New York State Militia um, because you have seen them before. All of the photos on this particular page here in 99 historic photos of Harper's Ferry or historic images are of the 22nd New York State Militia. In fact, there is George Goldschmidt of the 22nd, the guy who went down in the Titanic. And you can see, you know these photos. You've seen these photos before. Um, and some of these buildings are still extant, including the church you see behind those troops up there, right? They're right near Harper's Ferry in a town called Bolivar, um, right on the other side of Camp Hill. And there are an extensive series of photos of these very soldiers and they are all eventually under the command of course of Dixon Miles who will be uh, mortally wounded right at the end and right near the surrender. Of course you have some United States colored troops up on um, Camp Hill as well. There's some cool uh, um, wayside exhibits up on Camp Hill. Again that's that hill right there and there's good parking up there as well and you can see um, so several of the photo sites that we went along with. So we're going to continue our journey here with one last pan from Loudon Heights, Shenandoah River, the train crossing, Potomac River there, of course, beautiful town of Harpers Ferry. One last thing, Harpers Ferry suffers from floods being surrounded by rivers here, and in town you can see numerous um, hash marks on the backside of one building to show these floods, sometimes coming more than once um, in a year, and they would absolutely devastate the lower town every time they came. I'm furiously trying to flip through to the right page so I can show you some of these floods before we continue on. This one on the bottom here is the 1942 flood. Um, here is the devastating 1889 flood where the buildings were, you know, it, it turned into the whole town was one massive lake there. There were terrible floods, two of them in 1996 and a couple since then as well. All right, on what I hope will be the final ascent to what I think is a rather flat plateau once you get up there at the Stone Fort. Still not to the top, but getting close because I can see the 30 pounder battery. I'm on the outside of it, of course. I think you can imagine what it looks like inside, but let me show you what it looked like during the Civil War. These logs here, these are called revetments. They're going to keep the earth from, of course, tumbling in and further fortify the guns and the gunners. These are, as you can see, parrot rifles because of the wrought iron jacket or uh, jacket reinforcing the breech. The rest of the gun is made of cast iron, but they made it stronger at the breech, of course. That was parrot specific design. You can see a historic map here, and you can also see that these guns weighed the tube 4,200 pounds. Again, getting up here by yourself is tough. Um, getting up a 4,200 pound gun. 
even with some help from horses, not easy. But it looks like it's getting flatter. Must be getting close because I've seen a few more fortification type of earthworks and look, now there's a low stone wall, which was no doubt at the time a much more substantial stone wall. And I just can't even stress enough getting up here and then, okay, man, build this stone wall, build this fort, lug those cannons up here. You know, it's no surprise there's no photos taken way up here during the Civil War at the stone fort. Um, I could just imagine the conversation with the Civil War photographer. Okay, strap that portable darkroom onto your back, take the breakable glass plates and put them in a case grab that camera and come on up here just to take four or five photos where by the way you better bring your own water because there's probably no water source up here either uh, no surprise there are no photos taken up here during the Civil War All right, after a long trek, it looks like I am finally entering what looks to be the stone fort. Very, very cool. Now, here we are way up here. These guys are ordered to build this stone fort. And I wonder why. I think, could somebody really climb up this high with a brigade or a regiment or a division or anything like that and actually push soldiers off of here? Well, I do know that uh, military history is full of these things. Skipping forward, I think U.S. Grant and others were told you'll never bridge the James River with pontoon boats. And I think before that, Stonewall Jackson, you know, um, and other people were said to have no chance of ever kind of uh, just slipping through the wilderness to fall upon a vulnerable flank of, say, the 11th Corps in this case. Um, I uh, think that uh, here at Harper's Ferry, uh, the Confederates were told there is no way you're going to get cannons up on Loudoun Heights and certainly the Union said you're never going to be able to hug close enough to the river um, to get up here and attack us. But yet all those things happened and here you have some veteran and inexperienced troops up here in the Stone Fort. You're talking about New York troops, Ohio troops up here trying to defend this place on I believe September 13th. 1862 and here they are but up comes Lafayette McLaws uh, and two brigades that do the impossible the Confederates have already captured Loudoun Heights out of view to the right and now here they're gonna attack Maryland Heights and these trained and untrained troops the untrained ones being the um, uh, 126th New York rather they haven't been in battle yet and some of the veteran troops fight hard they fight really hard they call for reinforcements they're holding the Confederates back um, but ultimately no reinforcements are coming and after a fight that lasted six seven eight nine hours um, the Union is still holding on I believe before their commander Dixon Miles Colonel Dixon Miles who did a lot of baffling things um, that particular day and seemed to put into um, motion the chain of events the only chain of events that would result in the surrender of his garrison and that's what happened these guys were inexplicably ordered away right after they had done their jobs and then were labeled they were captured um, some of them and uh, then were labeled the Harper's Ferry cowards they would later acquit themselves later at Gettysburg but still that tag would follow them around throughout the war um, so here it is the stone fort one last look Well, this is where our journey will end here at the Stone Fort. I'm so glad you were able to join. I hope you can make it up here sometime. And if not, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you, thank you for supporting Battlefield Preservation. And since I don't have any photos to show you, actually, of what Civil War photographers took, here's a photo of me at this exact same spot in August of 1996.